All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are gonna be solving two-step word problems. And really teachers, uh, the excuse for these lessons is to just give students repeated practice with multiplication, uh, particularly trying to move into multiplying with that standard algorithm. Although, if uh, for terms of, in terms of differentiation, if students need to use the area model, or the partial products method, they're certainly allowed to do that. But these next few lessons, the point is to get students to be uh, practicing the standard algorithm. We, I love the fact that they're doing it in word problems because it forces the students to recognize, particularly the fact that these are two-step word problems, is it forces the students to recognize when do they need to add or subtract versus multiplying. Uh, as opposed to traditional textbooks where you're in the multiplication chapter, so of course every word problem is multiplication and students don't really have to think of much. Uh, so that's one of the cool things about these word problems is it requires students to model and really think about the problem and understand uh, when do they need to add and subtract versus when do they need to multiply. So the table shows the number of stickers of various types in Chrissy's new sticker book right here. And then Chrissy's six friends each own the same sticker book. How many stickers do Chrissy and her six friends have all together? So what we've got here is I'm going to draw a little bit of a tape diagram showing that right here is what is in Chrissy's sticker book. So she's got 32 flowers, she's got 21 smiley faces, and she's got 39 hearts. So the first thing we need to do is figure out, well, how many stickers are there all together? So I'm going to stack that up, 32, 21, and 39, and I'm going to add of course, I see a nice simple thing that 9 and 1 is 10, plus 2 is 12, so that's 2, carry the 1, which is actually 10, right? Carry the 10. And then we're going to count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, so we have 90. So there are 92 stickers here. And we want to figure out how many stickers do Chrissy and her six friends have. So that means we're going to need seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each of these has 92 in it. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to do 92 multiply by seven. So using that standard algorithm, 92 times seven. So let's see, seven times two is 14. So that's 14 ones. So I'm going to put the 4, and I'm going to carry the 10 into the tens column. And then we have 7 times 9 tens, so that's 63 tens, plus one more 10 is 64 tens. So we have 644 stickers in all. This is a beautiful problem. Jared uh, sold 194 Boy Scout chocolate bars. Matthew sold three times as many as Jared, and Gary sold 297 fewer than Matthew. How many bars did Gary sell? So we have three characters. We have Jared, we have Matthew, and we have Gary. So I'm going to label three tape diagrams. Jared, Matthew, and Gary, and I'm going to give each one of them the exact same length tape diagram, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the question again, and it says Jared sold 194 Boy Scout chocolate bars, so that means this bar right here represents 194. And then it says, Matthew sold three times as many as Jared. So if this is Jared, we know that Matthew is, his tape diagram is going to be three units in length. So that's 194, and another 194, and another 
194. So really, that's going to be 194 times 3. And then it says, Gary sold 297 fewer than Matthew. All right, so Gary is going to be less than Matthew, and so it doesn't matter how much I, I draw here. We just know that the portion that is missing, this piece right here that is missing, is 297. And really, if I wanted to be more precise, I would have made it very short. I would have made this piece a little shorter, and this blue part, the part that's missing, would have been a little bit longer. All right, like about there, I guess, let's say. Okay, so let's do the math. So what are we going to do? What's our strategy? Well, the first thing we're going to do... Oh, wait. The question is asking, what is Gary's tape diagram right here? How many bars did Gary sell? So what's our strategy? Well, we're going to take 194. We're going to multiply by 3 because that's going to tell us how many Matthew sold. Then we're going to take that answer and subtract off the 297, and that's going to give us how much Gary sold. So let's do some math. 3 times 4 ones is 12 ones. So that's going to be 2 ones, carry the 10 into the tens column. Then we have 3 times 9 tens, so that's nine, uh, 27. 27 tens plus one more 10 is 28 tens. So I'm going to put the 8, carry the 2. And then we have 3 times 100 is 300, plus 2 more hundreds, so that's 500. So Matthew, right here, sold 582 candy bars, or chocolate bars. And then Gary sold 297 fewer. So that means we need to subtract, and of course we need to regroup the 8, that becomes a 7, and we now have 12 ones, and 12 ones minus 7 is 5. Then we have 7 tens take away 9 tens, which means we need to regroup. So we're going to have 4 hundreds and 17 tens. And then 17 tens take away 9 tens is 8 tens. And then 4 hundreds take away 2 hundreds is 2 hundreds. So Gary sold 285 bars. This is a great problem. It says write an equation that would allow someone to solve this problem. Basically, we want to know m. And m is essentially saying, what's the total? Right? Um, and so one example could be 973 plus 723 plus 723 plus 723. So that's one example. Another example could be 723 times 3, and then add in 973. Another example might be 973 plus, and then 723 times 3. Now, this example, I might be redundant and put the parentheses here, because this reminds uh, the students that we need to first multiply by 3, then we can go ahead and add. You would not want to add these two together and then multiply by 3, because that would be saying you have, not only do you have three copies of the 723, but it would also, if you added these first, it would also mean you have three copies of the 973, and that would be wrong. So these are three examples. There might be some other examples. I'm not coming up with any off the top of my head. Uh, and then it says, write your own word problem. So parents and teachers, let your students differentiate. Let them get creative. In fact, get, get really crazy. Let them invent their own tape diagrams and have somebody else write the story problem or vice versa. Right? Let somebody write the story problem and somebody else writes the word problem. I mean the tape diagram. So this is a really prime opportunity to allow students to differentiate. And that wraps up 4th grade, Module 3, Lesson 12. Students are solving two-step word problems, but really the point is to practice that standard algorithm for multiplication.